Hey guys, it's Christy and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to be doing a full day wear test of the new Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. So before we get into it, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel before you leave. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy and let's get into it. Okay, so I am super excited about this one. I did put up a poll on YouTube and on my Instagram. Which one would you guys most like to see? And on Instagram, Hourglass won by an absolute landslide. On YouTube, Lancome won by just a little bit. Um, and then I had some of you vote for both, which I thought was really funny. So I was going to pick up both, but unfortunately the Lancome is not yet available where I am. I assume it is because of the SPF content. So I had to pick the Hourglass first. If the Lancome, if the Lancome becomes available soon, I will absolutely be testing it out. But for now, we're just going to go with the Hourglass. Okay, so let's open her up. I picked up the shade 1.5, which is supposed to be very fair with cool undertones. That sounds pretty spot on for me. So it just comes in this beautiful bottle, this gorgeous bronze lid. You get a frosted bottle. It's very heavy, very weighted. Definitely what I expected from Hourglass. And it does come in a pump. And I really like the way this sort of fits. The packaging is definitely um, very expensive in my opinion, which I'm glad. This is an expensive, expensive foundation. So this retails for $58 US or $74 Canadian. This is now available at Sephora. This is made in Korea and has a 12 month shelf life and you get one fluid ounce of product. So that's pretty much standard across the board. So this is supposed to be a weightless liquid foundation that delivers medium coverage with a light diffusing effect for up to 16 hours. We're not gonna get 16 hours in, but I'm thinking we can easily get a good solid 12 hour test. So this is going to be a natural finish, medium coverage, and light diffusing pigments are supposed to deliver a natural soft focus and help protect against blue light. Love that. Um, so this is supposed to be transfer resistant and resistant to humidity and sweat. We're gonna test that today. It is going to be hot out there. It is gonna be like a bajillion degrees today, which I feel like is very standard across the world right now, which is kind of wild. So we're really gonna test this out. I'm going to be out. I'm going to be running errands. I think I have to wear a mask for a little bit of that time. So this is really, really going to get tested. And this is also definitely the most expensive foundation I have ever purchased. So I am hoping for good things. Okay, so as usual, I am going to go in on one side of my face. I'm not going to prime or powder. And then on the other side, I am going to prime and powder as I would typically do. Um, and I think I'm going to do all the setting business on this side of my face because it is the side that needs the most love right now. And I'm just taking my Dior Backstage Primer. I just really like this. I feel like it just creates a really smooth canvas for my makeup. And I'm not sure, there was a brush, um, but I did not pick up the brush. I just didn't feel like it was necessary. So I am going to try it with a sponge, of course, but I'm also going to try it... I will also try it with a brush. I'm going to try it with my um, Sigma F82 brush. It's kind of my favorite foundation brush. I'm just going to take a pump on my palette. Okay, so that was actually more like a pump and a half. So it's definitely a bit of a thicker formula. I can see that right away. The color match looks like it's going to be perfect. So I'm happy about that. Okay, I'm just going to take a little bit on my sponge. Okay, I nailed the color match. Very proud of myself. I was really careful because I was like, for spending $74, do not mess this up. I haven't seen any reviews on this one yet. Okay, I wasn't sure at first, but it does seem to be blending in okay. It definitely is more of a medium coverage. Ooh. I just took a lot for my forehead. That was really unnecessary. Okay, so I do think you can build the coverage. So I'm going to have to do that on this side. But I really want to try to go in on this side with a brush because I want to see how it blends and performs with a brush. If you're new here, I do have very dry skin. Um, I do take really good care of my skin. I do moisturize. I do all of the things. But sometimes things just don't work out. So just keep that in mind. I don't know how I feel yet. 
I do like the brush side much, much better. So I am just gonna add some more to this side. I think I'll like it a lot better. Yeah, okay. I like this much, much better. I don't like it with a sponge. Which is weird because normally that's my favorite application, but there are foundations in my collection that are fabulous and I just don't like with a sponge. Um, the Makeup Forever HD Skin is one of them. So a stippling motion with a brush seems to really work the best. The shade match probably could not have gotten that any better if I tried, which makes me happy. I love that it's not pulling yellow. It's truly pulling more cool tone. There are certain brands, Charlotte Tilbury being one of them, that even if you pick the cooler undertone, it's going to pull yellow and it drives me bananas. So really happy to see that Hourglass is not like that. I have tried a sample of an Hourglass foundation before and I really enjoyed it. I think it might have been a sample of the stick foundation, I think. So when I was initially putting this on, I wasn't super, super sold. But as I got it blended out with the brush, I really, really like how it looks. Right away, I'm thinking it needs a brush, which kind of makes sense because they did market it and release it with a brush. So that kind of makes sense. And as I was blending, it wasn't my favorite at first because I felt like it was just sort of sitting on top of the skin. But now that I've had time to just stipple it in and let it sit, it looks like it's sort of, it's definitely taking on that natural finish. I like that. I particularly love this side of my face, but that could also be because this side's a bit of a mess. I'm just going to add a bit of my NARS Soft Matte Concealer to cover some blemishes. Okay, and for under eye concealer, I... I know. I fell into the hype and I picked up the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. Yeah, it's it's good. It's absolutely as good as everybody says it is. Um, so there's that. I did not expect to love it so much, but... I really, really do. It is beautiful for under the eyes. So I am noticing that on the skin, it feels the slightest bit tacky. It's not overly tacky like some foundations, but it does have a slight tack to it, which isn't my favorite. This might be one that I do have to powder. I am just going in with my Kosas Cloud Set, and I'm just really gonna set the areas that needed some extra love. Okay, so the Kosas powder, as usual, just really sort of blurred everything out uh, and it took any of the tackiness away from the foundation. So I'm pleased with that. So let me pop off camera, finish up the rest of my makeup, and I'll be right back to get this wear test started. All right, guys, so the rest of the makeup is on and so far, I think I like it. The side that I did add powder to, I did need to add a little bit of Fix Plus. I felt like it was just looking a little bit too dry, but otherwise it seems to look pretty good overall. The side that I did not powder, I still like more. Um, when I went in with my powder and with my powder blush and bronzer, it didn't grab onto those kind of awkwardly. It played really nicely with that. Typically that's part of why I like to powder down my foundation just to give those a bit of a nicer base to blend onto, but it didn't seem to give me any problems with that whatsoever. There's still a little bit of a tack to it, but really not much. It's really, really settled down, and it really does have a very natural finish to the skin. So I'm loving that. And then this side where I did powder, it looks pretty similar. There's a little bit more of a luminosity right in the center of my face, but that doesn't bother me. I will say this does look to be a bit more of a medium coverage. Um, I definitely had to go in and spot conceal some of my really problem areas, and I also had to add a little bit more in certain areas. So it's definitely much more of a medium coverage. I don't think you're going to be able to accomplish medium to full with this at all, but it doesn't say you can, so that's perfectly fine. It definitely has that little bit of light reflecting properties to it, much like my beloved NARS. So I'm interested to see how it how it plays throughout the day. I really like how it's sitting on my skin, particularly on the side that I did not powder, which is really interesting. Perhaps this is a foundation that I just don't need to powder, in which case, great. The tackiness settled the shade match could not have been more spot on so I'm very pleased with that and I really like that it's a true cool undertone and it's not pulling yellow that makes me very happy um so far I think I like it the only thing I'm going to mention that I've noticed right away is that this needs to be done with a brush the sponge it did not play the best with my sponge 
at all. So that's one thing I will mention, but otherwise, so far I like it, but we will see how it behaves throughout the day. I'm going to really put it through its paces today. Like I mentioned, I've got a lot of stuff to do. I'm going to be outside. It's going to be really hot. Um, I think I have to wear a mask at some point, but we're going to do this. We're going to put it to the test. So I will see you guys at the end of the day and let you know my final thoughts. Hey guys, I'm just checking in at the six hour mark because the foundation is looking so good and I just had to let you know. So I'm actually just about to go for a walk. So I just wanted to document this before I get too sweaty, but it looks so good so far. The foundation is completely still intact except for my chin, uh, but I did have lunch. And if anything, the side that I powdered looks a little bit drier but nothing bad. The side that I did not powder is definitely looking a little more radiant. You can see my oils popping through a little bit right here and I have dry skin so I don't usually see that but when I do I personally like it. Um, so I don't mind just because it makes my skin look more healthy and less dull. Aside from my chin the foundation looks just as flawless as it did when I first put it on as opposed to you know six hours of wear so I'm really impressed so far I really like it I really like how my skin still looks and again it is so skin like that it doesn't look like I'm wearing a full face foundation it looks really really good so far so that is it for now I will see you guys at the end of the night Hey guys, so we are now at almost exactly 12 hours of testing out the new Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. So initially when I put this on, I did not like application with the sponge, so I would not recommend that. It definitely played much, much nicer with a brush, so I would definitely recommend going in with a brush. That does kind of make sense given that they released the product with a brush. That being said, it ended up looking really beautiful. I then went about my day, I was out and about, I was running some errands, I had to wear a mask at one point, and around midday the foundation looked so good. It looked like I had just put it on. I was very, very pleased, aside from some wear on my chin, which really wasn't the fault of the product, it was me. I thought it looked really, really great. This afternoon, so the last few hours, I've really been putting it through its paces. You know, I, I went for a walk and then I got into a bunch of projects here at home. So I ended up really, really working up a sweat. And as a result, I think it did kind of wear off in the center of my face, particularly on the side that I didn't powder. And I also feel like it sort of settled into my pores a little bit. And based on the shininess that I'm getting as somebody with really dry skin, I think if you have oily skin, you this might not be your favorite product. I am finding it kind of interesting how it's really settled into texture, but it didn't really do that until after I was really, really sweating. And typically you don't want to work out or work out or work up that much of a sweat when you are wearing your makeup. But overall, it still looks pretty good, especially for what I put it through. I'm mostly really super impressed with how it looked after I was out and about and doing all of the things, and it still looked so good. And I had also, I had a mask on, and it looked great. The one thing I would say is that it does say it is resistant to humidity, and it was at the first part of my day, but like I said, when I was doing a lot of work here at home, not so much. So I will say that I'm not 100% sure if that claim is true. I think this is a beautiful, beautiful foundation. My recommendations are just apply it with a brush. Uh, I mean, typically I would never recommend working out in your makeup. So there's that. Um, definitely apply it with a brush. I did not like it with a sponge. I don't think you would love this if you have oily skin. I thought it would remind me a lot more of my NARS foundation. They're both more of a medium coverage. However, the NARS lets me apply it with either a brush or a sponge. It gives me a soft radiance, but it never settles into pores and it never um, does anything strange on my skin. This did a couple weird things, but it still looks decent. Like I, I would leave the house looking as it does right now. I would maybe do a touch up, but otherwise I think it's okay. Um, this is, I know it's never going to let me down. I want to be very specific because I know this is a very, very expensive foundation. Based on my impression right now, I liked it, but I like the NARS more. And 
it's just really ridiculously expensive. So while I will certainly use this up and continue to wear it and continue to test it out, I don't think it's something you need to run out and buy. If you already have the NARS light reflecting, stick with that because I think it's a much better formula. This one is fine. It's just that it doesn't seem to hold up to as much as the NARS does, if that makes sense. And it, for the price point, I kind of want it to be bulletproof. That's, I think that's what I'm getting at here. So while I think this is nice, I think it's a great day-to-day -day foundation. I think if you're looking at this for that soft glow, absolutely recommend the NARS Light Reflecting. And it's, <laughs> that's also an expensive foundation, but it's less expensive than this. But overall, it worked out pretty good for me. I'll definitely be able to use it. I'll definitely be able to enjoy it. I just, I don't know if I can recommend such an expensive foundation when I know there are some in my collection that I enjoy more. Yeah, so while this is good, it's not my favorite, but I also don't dislike it. So if you have texture as well, I would definitely use a pore filling primer. I do find that it does tend to settle into pores a little bit, especially once you start um, putting it through its paces a little more. So just know that oily skin, textured skin might not be your absolute favorite. Overall, I think it's nice. I just think there are better options. I think it's good. I'll definitely use it. I'll definitely enjoy it. I'm not mad that I bought it, but I'm still going to enjoy my NARS or my Catrice foundations more. That is where we'll leave it for today. It is good, not amazing, <laughs> but I hope that made sense. I hope this video was helpful if you're considering picking this one up. Again, I will try my best to get a hold of that Lancome foundation if it comes, if it becomes available here in the next few months, but otherwise, let me know down below uh, if you were thinking of picking this one up, have you tried it already? Let me know. Um, and let me know your skin type because I'm curious as to how it works for others. So that is it for me today. Thank you so very much for watching. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. I do upload at least three new videos every single week. And that is it for me today. Thank you again so very much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.